Well, good morning. Uh, here from Cyprus again. Um, I'm just doing. This is an early morning video. It's probably time is just about um, five past ten past six now. And um, you know, I went up on the mountain, and we did the uh, we did the video uh, of uh, <coughs> excuse me Moses coming down from the mountain. But this is a different video. This, if you look, this is early in the morning. The sun's starting to rise behind me. It's actually. It's been really, really stormy uh, last night, most of the night. <coughs> it's raining a little here, even as I'm speaking to you. And it's a little chilly, which is great. It's great, so nothing wrong with that. Anyway, I wanted to, you to see uh, just something different. Think of the magnificence of God as you watch this video, as you see the sunrise. Think of this God that uh, that's created everything that we are and everything that we see. He created you. You know, the scriptures clearly tell us that we're fearfully and wonderfully made, that we're made in his image. And and people interpret this so much, so differently. You know, the, the fact that we're made in God's image, that um, God is spirit and within us we have uh, an ability to connect in the spirit and that's how we connect with our God. And when Jesus came to say the kingdom of heaven, is near and, and when jesus came and said that the kingdom of uh, that un unless you're born again you cannot enter the kingdom of god or the kingdom of heaven um then it's the born again of the spirit that we need to really understand and i might just get actually poured down on at the moment but we'll see we'll see how it goes a video in the rain um if i put my hood up it's because it's raining okay and when it rains over here, it rains. But I'm going to continue with this video because I think not only does it rain, but our God reigns. And our God is awesome. And whatever you're going through in your life at this moment, God still reigns. God reigns whether you're going through difficulty, whether you're going through sickness. God reigns. Your sickness has nothing to do with your salvation. God still reigns. When you believe and trust in Jesus Christ, who came and died on a cross and saved you, and and set you free god reigns and we need to understand that and and what god's been telling me in fact as i was <laughs> it was chatting with me this morning early hours and as i was lying there and thinking to god and i was saying god you know what 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 about these videos it's like god's he wants some he wants his word to be broken out not just be spoken in churches not just be spoken in nice clinical settings in nice there's nothing wrong with that but god wants it spoken out and spoken among his creation with his creation all around him and that's what we're trying to do today so i've just thought we'd go back to exodus uh chapter 33 and verse 12 and this if you remember in 32 we looked at 32 moses came down from the mountain with his tablets of two tablets that god had written uh, himself on the tablets and moses he, he, he recognized that the, that the people they'd um they'd made a golden calf and they were worshiping this calf and he was so angry and he was so frustrated. He'd just been up the mountain for 40 days. Uh, I mean, did he have anything to eat? Was he fasting? Well, we don't know. We're not told all the intricate details, but what we are told is that he'd met with God. And so Moses really knew his God. And there might be people in your life that you know they know God. Well, they're the people, you know. Get connected with Stay close to Watch how they know God. Watch how they worship. Watch how they follow Jesus, watch how they pray, watch how they encourage other people, because this is our God. He's an amazing God. Anyway, it says uh, in the next chapter after that, in Exodus 33, uh, Moses, he wants to speak to God. He wants to talk to God. And um, in verse 12, it says, Moses said to the Lord, You've been telling me, lead these people. Moses speaking to God, lead these people. But you've not let me know who you're going to send with me. Am I doing it on my own? How can, what do you mean, lead these people? There's thousands of them. Who are you going to send with me? You've not told me this. He said, you've not let know who you'll send with me. You've said, I know you by name and you've found favour with me. You've said that, God. And God knows you by name and he knows me by name. And I wonder if God finds favour with us. You know, how does God find favour with us? He finds favour when we do what he tells us to do. When we're obedient to his word, when we're obedient to our faith, to knowing God, 
when we're not letting the cares of this world, the weeds choke us and choke the life of our faith out. We're not doing any of that. This is our God and he knows us and he knows us. And then he goes on, he said, if you're pleased with me, God, God, if you're pleased with me, teach me your ways so that I may know you and continue to find favor with you. Oh, Lord God, wouldn't that be wonderful if, if we would continue to find favor with God so that God knows us, that God, to, to find favor with God is just the most wonderful thing. That we know that God loves us, that we know his favor is upon us. This is our God. He's a powerful, almighty God. He said, if you're pleased with me, teach me your ways. Teach me your ways, Lord. Teach me your ways, Lord, that I may find favor with you. Maybe that should be our prayer. Lord, teach us your ways. Lord, teach us your ways. Jesus came to show us God's ways. He said, when you've seen me, you've seen the Father. He said, if you do as I do, you've seen the Father, you're doing what the Father wants you to do. And Jesus was kind and compassionate a caring, loving, had time for everyone, wasn't selfish, wasn't, uh, didn't get uh, angry at people as such. Jesus got angry at, not at the people, but at the way they're thinking and the things that they said and the things that they do, they do. And I would hate it if God was angry at me because I'm doing things that I shouldn't be doing. And, and I'm sure you would too. He said, uh, he goes on, I continue to find favor with you. Remember that this nation is your people. And maybe we, maybe when we come before God, maybe we should perhaps say, Lord God, this life that you've given me is your life. This breath, this oxygen that I breathe is your oxygen. The food that I eat is your food. Everything that we have comes from God. And maybe we need to say, you know, say, Lord, help me. Help me to do right. Help me to do what you want me to do. Help me to worship you as you want me to worship you. As it says in John, he says that the that, that kind of worshippers, God loves are those who worship in spirit and in truth. And the word of God is truth. So if we worship according to his word, the Bible talks about lifting up holy hands, that when you worship, you release the, you release the presence of God in you. You release the spirit by lifting up holy hands and worshiping him. Going, Kara Sitanda. Shabbata Sultan, I worship you this morning. I worship you for this day. I worship you for this oxygen I'm breathing. I worship you that I can speak. I worship you that I can move. I worship you, God, because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I know that fell well because it's written in the book. Hallelujah. This is our God. This is our God. And, uh, my Bible went off. He said, Moses said to him, Oh no, God says, the Lord replied to him, My presence will go with you and I will give you rest. My presence will go with you and I will give you rest. Jesus said, I will never leave you or forsake you. The Apostle Paul writes in letters that, that we've got this treasure in a jar of clay. That the Spirit of God lives in us. In Revelation it says, Jesus said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anybody open the door and invite me and I will come in and eat with him and he with me. So we're talking really about this, this Spirit of the living God who comes in us and lives in us and strengthens us. But more than that, Jesus said, I am the Prince of Peace. So if Jesus is the Prince of Peace, and Jesus is God, and God is Jesus, and the Holy Spirit is three in one, that they are all God, that the Holy Spirit, that is God, it is Jesus who lives in us by the power of his Holy Spirit, and all three are connected. And more than that, they connect with you, and they connect with me, if we would just embrace it. You know, and stop looking around. Stop looking at the world. Stop looking at the philosophies of the world. Stop looking at the things that the world's doing. Look at what God's doing. Look at the book. Look at the miracles around you. 
Look at the amazing miracle in your life. Look at the peace that Jesus said. God said, I'm never going to leave you. Jesus is never going to leave you. No, I forsake you. He's going to be, he lives in you. Just this morning, why don't you just confirm that this morning? Just say, Father God. Corsita bata sata. Holy Spirit, fill me. Doubt out. Breathe the doubt out. And inhale the presence of God. Holy Spirit, would you enrich me? Would you empower me? Would you strengthen me for all this day that has ahead? And Lord, that I could know your name, that I could know your peace, that I could know you, O oh God, that your presence will go with me. My presence will go with you and I will give you rest, says God. So Moses said to him, okay, well, if your presence doesn't go with us, then we don't want to move from here. And maybe that's the, my prayer. Lord God, if your presence does not go with me, then I don't want to take one more step forward until it's with me, until you're in me, until you're guiding me, until you're showing me. <laughs> How will anyone know that you're pleased with me and, and, and with your people unless you do go with us? How's anyone going to be? It's okay, Lord. Lord God, we can see yeah, God's with us. But we need, like Paul says, a demonstration of the Spirit's power. How will anyone know? <laughs> what else will distinguish me and your people from all the other people on earth? You know, the, 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 the thing that, uh, that, that, that we have and that we can have, if we would just believe, is that peace. <laughs> In verse 17, the Lord says to Moses, listen, Moses, I'm going to do the very thing that you've asked because I'm pleased with you and because I know you by name, I'm going to do it. What, what is it that we want God to do? What is, a, what is the most amazing thing that God could do for us? You know, Jesus sent out the 72 uh, to go and into the villages and preach the word of God to the people. And when they came back, they were full of joy and they were so excited. They said, then they're saying to Jesus, Jesus, uh, the blind, the eyes were opened, the lame walked, even the demons subjected were subjected to us in your name. And Jesus said, listen, yeah, guys, that's great. And that's wonderful. There's something far greater than that. Marvel that your names are written in the book of life. And it says, and when Moses, when God says to Moses that I'm pleased with you and I know you by name, and I know you by name, that we need to know that God knows us by name and that our names are written in the book of life. Imagine that, that one day we'll be standing before our Father God who created all this and he'll be checking, is your name in the book? Your name will be in the book because you have believed. Because you have believed. Jesus was saying to the disciples, wasn't he? Before he was going up into heaven, he was talking to the disciples and he was saying, listen, you believe because you've seen. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. And that's you and me. We haven't really seen. We haven't seen the holes in Jesus' hands. We haven't seen the hole in his side. We haven't seen Jesus per se, personally, in flesh. And yet we believe. And God says we're blessed. And the Lord says to Moses that I'm pleased with you. That I, it's raining. Then I know you by name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the rain. Then Moses said, now, oh no. And the Lord said, I will do the very thing you've asked because I'm pleased with you and I know you by name. So Moses said, okay then, show me your glory. Show me, God. Show me. The Lord said, I will cause all my goodness to pass in front of you. And I will proclaim my name, the Lord, in your presence. I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. And I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. But he said, you cannot see my face. For no one may see me and live. This is our God <laughs> who sends the rain. Hallelujah. A video in the rain. Uh, I'm not sure how this is going to go, but hey. This is our God. He said, you cannot see my face. And then the Lord said, there is a place near me where you may stand on a rock. There's a place near me where you may stand on the rock. That reminds me of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, he's the rock, he's the rock of ages. 
Jesus said, don't build your house on sandy ground, build it on the solid rock. Jesus is the rock and, and Jesus is the rock and, and Jesus is so near God. Jesus stands at the right hand side of God. This is our Lord. He said, when my glory passes by, I'll put you in a cleft in the rock and cover you with my hand until I have passed by. Then I will remove my hand and you will see my back. But my face must not be seen. My face must not be seen. You know, God, quite often in our lives, he'll be passing by and he's hidden. He's hidden is our God, but he's passing by. And we don't always see him, but we don't see him. And as he explained to Moses, we can't see him because his glory is too powerful and too awesome. But this is our God. The Bible talks about us being obedient to God. The Bible talks about us to, uh, to follow him, to listen to him. God said when Jesus went up on the mountain of transfiguration, it was changed before him. God said uh, to the guys, a voice from the cloud, he said, this is my son in whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. And so my prayer today is, Lord, that we'd hear your voice, that we would listen to you. You know, the Lord is raining, literal rain uh, on me this morning, but he also wants to rain out his Holy Spirit, rain on you in his presence, on everything that you do. And he will. He will because he says he will. His presence will never leave you. He will never leave you or forsake you. This is our God, even in the midst of our pain. Is it James who says, consider it but pure joy, my brothers and sisters of any kinds. Whenever you face troubles, whatever, whatever is con consider it joy. And maybe, you know, maybe that's, that's something that we should think of this morning, that we should consider it pure joy. Hallelujah. Just going back to that, Exodus 33. Verse 21. And the Lord said, there's a place near me where you may stand on a rock. The sheer fact that we've invited Jesus Christ into our lives. You know, behold, I stand at the door and knock. And really he's talking to the church at the time, but he's talking to all mankind. Because even in the church, there are people who are doing everything right on the outside, but on the inside, they've never really invited Jesus in. They've never really moved with the Holy Spirit. They've never really knelt down and confessed the sins. And that verse, that verse, there's a place near me where you may stand on a rock. The place near God is, his name is Jesus. It's the kingdom of heaven is near. The kingdom of God is near. It's right here, right now. The kingdom of God is near. It's a place that is near God. It is God's heart for his people. Peter says that he doesn't want anyone to perish, but everyone to come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ, his son. That there's gonna be a judgment day. There's gonna be a day where we're held accountable for everything that we do. And whether you're far away from God, It doesn't matter because God's got a purpose and a plan for your life. James 4 verse 8 says, come near to God and he'll come near to you. We walk forward, we walk towards God. This is how we come near to God. And as we come near to him, he comes near to us. And when we get up close and personal with God, we're not allowed to see his face but we're allowed to experience his presence. And we experience God's presence in different ways. One is reading God's word. One is praying and one is worshiping. Those three ways are great. 
And as we do those things, God will rain down on us. Rain down. And even as I'm speaking now, as the rain is pouring down, I want you to be encouraged and to be strengthened. God approves of this word this morning because he's raining down on it. <laughs> I'm going to go because the rain's pouring and the camera's wet. But know this. This is our God. Let him rain down on you. Let his Holy Spirit pour on you. I want to pray for you, Father God. I'm praying for everyone who is listening to this this morning. That Lord God, or this afternoon, whenever, that you'd bless them. May the Holy Spirit guide them and lead them. May you come near to them. May you, Father God, may you encourage them. In Jesus' name. Take care and God bless. You know we can come near to God. We'll never see him. Paul talks of that we see as in a glass darkly. <laughs> or through glass. We won't see very clearly. But we know he's with us. Be encouraged today. God's with you. You'll not see him clearly in everything. It's impossible. Very little will you see God clearly. You won't. But what we need to know is he'll never leave us. He'll never forsake us. This is our God. Take care. Let it rain, eh? Let it rain. May the power of the Holy Spirit rain on your life. May the presence of Jesus Christ rain. May God rain. May rain in your family. May rain in your children. May rain in your brothers and sisters. May rain in your workplace. May God rain on everything that you do. Lord God, rain on me. That should be our prayer. Yeah, we'll never see him clearly. But we can hear his voice and we can know his name and we can know he's with us. Be encouraged today. Video with a difference. God loves you. And we are blessed. Bye-bye.